Okay. So at this point, you should be pretty much done building your animal. And I'm going to show you guys a couple things that have to be done before you decide to turn them in and submit them to the folder. If you've already put them in the turn in folder, you can always go into the folder and delete the old one of yours and then put the new version in it after you redo this and download it. Okay, so let's take a look at our lion. The lion's looking pretty cool at this point. I've intentionally changed a few things. Uh, you can see that, that what, what we're going to have to do when we print this is, is you see how this is kind of the lion's kind of barely, you can kind of see that gap there. He's, it's kind of barely floating here. So if I move the lion down so that they are actually these feet, oh, you can see that, that paw just hit the ground, right? This won't work for 3D printing. We need to have a flat spot on the bottom, and we need to have all of these feet touching it sort of an even way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this down until I see a little bit of each foot. And it, hey, and like I said, this, that's not going to be enough. This will be no good. It's got to be significant. See these? There's a significant amount of these paws that are actually underneath here. But I don't want to go down any further because it's going to cut this paw up too much. Okay, so the problem is these three look really good at this point. So I'm, you know, this, this is looking great. By the way, I grouped this together before I started moving it around like that. So what I need to do now, the problem is, is this leg, I, when I designed it, I screwed up. I made it too high up in the air. And there's a few different things that we can do about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my group. I can either ungroup it. Actually, I'm going to go do that right now. I'm just going to ungroup it. Now, be careful when you move it around now because stuff kind of could come apart. There's a couple things. If it looks, now you can see this one, this hip is up way too high anyways. So maybe I just, in this case, I just want to move it down until it's like this. But you may have a different pose than this. So let's say that doesn't work for you. Well, then you have to go in and you can just move these around until, and remember your goal is to get that foot so that it is sticking out. See, when I look underneath the surface now, I can see, hey, you know what? This is going to be cut off. This is going to be cut off. That's going to be cut off. Okay, so now we're going to do the cutting off part, right? How do you do that? Well, all we need to do is to take a box. I'm going to get a call. Okay, so I'm going to put out a box. And what I want to do is I want to move this box. See, this box is 20 millimeters tall. If I move it down to negative 20 then it's going to cut off everything underneath here. And I've, I've already got it set up for that. We're going to make it into a hole because the box is going to be a negative. It's going to cut stuff off. And I'm going to drag this so it covers all those paws. Uh-oh. It's getting kind of close up here. I'm going to use the arrow key to nudge it forward a bit. Oh, now the back is almost off. Looks like I need to make that a bit bigger. There we are. See, now those things that you can see underneath there that are very dark... We're going to cut those off. So I'm going to grab it all together, and I'm going to group it. Hey, I know you want to get your shape printed, right? I mean, it would be terrible to do all this, this hard work and not get it printed. But what will happen if you don't make those pads big enough, and I'm going to show you in a second when this gets done loading and doing it. This is a, a complex thing for the computer to do on the server, so you got to give it a second. And um, But the point is... The bigger you make those flat parts at the bottom of the paw, let's take a look at this now. See those flat parts at the bottom, these ovals? The bigger you make it exactly flat on the bottom and even over, over, overall, the more likely it is it's going to print successfully without falling over and ruining your print and probably ruining most of the other prints that are on the build plate with yours. That's why I have to insist that you do this last step because I can't, these things take an hour or an hour and a half to print each. I can't sit there and babysit every one of them for an hour and a half and watch them carefully and make sure that they're fine. So what you have to do is do a couple steps for me that I just described, and that's move the feet down so that they're all poking out of the bottom. You might have to adjust some of the limbs for this, the, either the back legs or the front legs, move a paw down just a little bit, rotate it, whatever you need to do to make sure they all go through the plane. Then you drag out a box, move it down 20 millimeters, make it really big, and chop the parts that are sticking out the bottom flat off. And what you're going to get is you'll have the rounded paws at the top, so it still looks really cool, 
but at the bottom it's nice and flat and it's going to sit perfectly on your desk or on the fridge or you know wherever you decide to put this thing on top of the, you know on top of the stove or you know wherever you have it on display now the last step of this is you're going to make sure go to design and properties and you've got to make sure I got to name this too because I already have a quadruped line that it says your name and quadruped. I'm going to save that. And now there's my new name for it. And now we have to turn it into Mr. Woodchick. All right, that's pretty easy. We're going to go to design. Whoops, got to wait till it loads up all the way. It's not a good idea to do stuff without that. That's one of the, the problems with Tinkercad right now. The cloud's getting a little bit slow, as they I think, as they're getting more people on there. Pause it. Okay. Okay, so now it's done um, getting uh, loading that back up. I'm going to go to Design and Download for 3D Printing. And this is an STL file. Hey, and I really hope you listen to me about how you name it. I will delete it instantly if it's not named correctly. The problem is, is that I have 130 students every day, and if everybody named theirs different and maybe investigate and figure out whose it was and what it, what assignment it's for, it would take me hours to do this. I don't have that much time to spend on it, so I really need you to, it's not asking much, it's just the name that you were born with, right? You just need to type it in and put quadruped after it. Okay, so now you can go here. I'm going to go to my folder where we have these. And you can see I have a lot of downloads, just a ton of them. But if you look right here, here's the here's mine, Jeremy Woodchick Quadruped Lion 2. I'm going to right click and copy it. Then you're going to go to computer, teacher. If you have a shortcut, you can get there quicker. J.A. Woodchick, you got to find me. And then you go to turn in. Okay, you're in first period. You know, if you're in a different period, put it in that folder. You go to first period. And I'm going to right click. You won't see other people's files. I see those because I'm the teacher, right? You won't even get the chance to look at the other people's files right now. And you're going to paste it in here. A couple of words of caution that I get people um, kind of asking me about often is they put it in here and then they double click it because they want to see it, right? See if it worked. On my computer, if you double click it, it'll open up this program that helps you 3D print stuff called Makerware. See that M icon? Unless you're on one of these laptops, because a couple of them have this software on there, you won't see that at all. See, me, I'm the teacher. I got this software on here because I got to print it for you. This is what happens. Double click it. When you double click it, you don't have this software on there. So what you're going to see is like maybe a generic little paper there. You're not going to see the M. Do you know what that means? It means you don't have the software to view this file. But the question is, do I really need you to do anything to the STL file? Not all you need to do is turn it in. So if you get this thing, it says something about a valid certificate. When you try to open it, don't. When you download, a, don't worry about it. The, when you download an STL file, it's not going to open on your computer unless you have that certain software. And I think a couple of the laptops actually do have that software. But other than that, you're not going to see anything. Don't worry about it. All you need to do is download the STL and relay it to me through the turn in bin. When you're done with this today. You can uh, do the activities that are usually reserved for when you're done early. You can doodle on Tinkercad and make your own designs. You can work on homework, check your grades on Skyward. You can also go on code.org. You may not go on coolmathgames.com. That is a no-no today. Thanks, everybody, and I appreciate you listening.